mm-hmm. I started about two and a half years ago. And really the mandate for us in the data analytics team is to stand up uh, how we leverage data and then use the data for us to make good decisions as a competitive advantage right, across our group of companies. Uh, uh, um, TVS, and really the role of data analytics is to ensure that we have modernized a lot of those practices uh, and we are able to scale them as we expand our operations uh, throughout the globe, right? That is, how do we understand our customer preferences and parlay that into what we do in terms of uh, products and services in our company? And then how do we take advantage of data and robust algorithms in order to get to that outcome? So that way, we are very similar to one would think of in a retail company. On the other hand, we also uh, are a manufacturing company, right? We manufacture quite sophisticated products. So it's a different class of algorithms that we do. But net net, the commonality. Uh, that brings us all together is about leveraging good data for robust decision. I work with my CIOs uh, when it comes to IT infrastructure, when it comes to security. At the same time, um, we also work with the business teams, be it in sales and marketing on one hand, production on the other hand. A lot of our data analytics goes in understanding customer preferences and ensure that the products and services address those preferences, right? Uh, we're also a fairly large distribution setup, right? If you look at India, we have close to 5,000 dealerships. So that way it is very similar to, uh, data, from a data analytics standpoint, it's very similar to what an FFCG company would be going through, right? How do you get understand the, the, the movement of your products through a distribution network? How do you gain visibility to that? How do you have an influenced uh, marketing and influenced sales uh, through a distribution network and distribution partners? From a, a customer standpoint, as mentioned, we understand the customer preferences. So what kind of vehicles, therefore, should we have available at what points across the net? Right? So that's an important problem statement for us. Then take it back one step. We do provide information to our, our, our partners across the dealership network so they understand their own performance. Then take one step back, right? So which is how do we ensure that our vehicles get to our dealerships in the, in, in the first place? So again, we leverage a lot of optimization algorithms to ensure that our logistics cost, our um, uh, stock that we manage across our warehouses are all optimal and are based on a full logic that we expect right, in terms of market demand. So we leverage a lot of data and analytics there. Taking one step back, right, when it comes to manufacturing, our own manufacturing, we leverage data and analytics both in optimization of production. So how do you optimize a production schedule, for example, right, the, full, the full system that you but also in things like defect detection, right? So as uh, to ensure that defect-free products go to our customers. Let's go one step back, right? It is about supply chain visibility. A lot of what we manufacture also is based on our partnership with the supplier partners. So how do we understand where our products are at what points in time in our supply chain, supply chain network? And therefore, how do we bring to bear all of our capabilities along with our supplier capabilities to the customer? Uh, quite a bit, actually. Quite a bit of our factory is, is already wired or very rapidly getting connected. But beyond procuring new things, we also work, worked with our, uh, our partners, our, our machine partners, and with our own teams to develop a range of connectivity solutions, right? Uh, and we largely leverage open source for it. Uh, and this is quite pervasive across, across our, our plans. Right? Um, and the application is also manifold. Another application is, is track and trace, right? Uh, if you do have a, a, a defective product, let's say a customer complains about a particular thing, we are able to trace it back to a particular production batch, right? And a lot of that is aided with, with the sensorization of what we have in our plants. Okay? Third is condition-based maintenance. Right? So not only are we having sensors to what we produce, we understand that a, a machine can potentially break down based on the data that we can collect. So we are able to get condition-based maintenance, predictive-based maintenance, uh, right? or predictive maintenance based on the IoT that the uh, data that we capture. Uh, fourth component is uh, what goes into the manufacturing process, right? So we have IoT for understanding our fuel consumption, our water consumption, how much air is, is there. So it also helps the optimization of the overall environment. So therefore, our application is planned. We've looked at uh, leveraging both uh, IoT to gather the information from the sensors and also analytics to divine uh, right, what is happening uh, from the IoT data. With that, for example, our uh, in our assembly unit, right, our efficiencies increased more than 10% over the last year. So that's a, that's a statistic that we can be fairly proud of, right? 
Uh, that's one example that I'd like to quote. Second is also around defect detection. Right? So there's also another place where leveraging things like computer vision, you're able to understand what, what, what may be a defective unit. So we, therefore we can both optimize our operation, meaning so we can have the right energy on, on where potentially higher defects come about in our assembly lines, but also ultimately we give a better product to our customer. Right? We clearly have measurements on the former, our, our, our defect catch rate, our quality rate has gone up, uh, while we take pride in the, in the latter, right? so where we uh, have better products. There is a whole class of different opportunities for us to leverage data and decision making, and we are going at, at, at a lot of them. Clearly, that, that opportunity set magnifies in terms of both availability of information and what we can therefore do with that in the world of connected tech. It gives us a lot more information, but the interesting thing is the customers that choose these products are also different customers. So it's a different customer pre preference, different access to information, and therefore different class of tools that we leverage to do that. Uh, knowledge and wisdom. Ultimately, it's the customers that will decide right, as to when, uh, when, uh, how much connectedness is required technology because ultimately it gives two big customer benefits. One is about establishing customer preferences. I'm able to do things that I was not able to do because of the connectedness. Think social networking example, right? And the equivalence for us, something in, in talk is understanding my driver, drive history, right? Which, which is not possible before. I had an idea of how my Right performance was now I'm able to understand that better. Or on the other hand, it gives you fast efficiencies, right? So I'm able to get the same product or service at a, at, at a fraction of what I used to incur. A lot of our vehicles have a variant, and one of the variants is a connected variant, and the choice for customers. We have both an on-premise and uh, we do leverage cloud, right? We, lever we have a couple of vendor partners in cloud again. Um, the names are, are failing on there, not that many choices there. So we worked with, with a couple of them. Uh, now the market is such that we understand that certain capabilities are probably better served with one hyperscaler partner versus another. And I would not be surprised that if you get to a multi-cloud environment in the future, not just for our company, but for all companies. Because that is the flexibility that an environment with cloud allows, and therefore it's very natural. The by and large, we leverage open source algorithms, we leverage Python as our base, uh, right, for, for a lot of the data sciences that we do. Of course, we have, uh, we leverage things like TensorFlow and PyTorch for deep learning. Like you said, we've invested in a few startups in the software technology space, and we work with all of them, right, and it's one of the premises of our, our investment, right, is based on the fact that we think there's a lot of synergies in how they can help us and also what value we can add back to our startups. Uh, one of the companies, US-based company called Altizon, and we put them for track and trace, right? So a lot of our sensors that I talked about, it helps us go back in our supply chain, all right? And this is a space that we're working with, uh, with Altizon. Another company, Singapore-based company called Tagbox, right? And that helps us with sensorization on our yard management, on our logistics. Those are spaces where we're working with another uh, investment uh, partner of ours right, uh, in Tagbox. On the other hand, uh, there's another U.S. Um, based startup called Electronics, and we work with them on the AI space of it, right? Uh, where, for example, we are leveraging their solve to help us uh, in defect detection. For the talk about investment startups, we're also working with several other startups, right, that are helping us with specific niche capabilities that we have. So we're also building a data sciences and engineering team. Too.